Hi guys, today what we're going to look at is something called identically equal polynomials. So as you can see on the screen there we have if ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to px cubed plus qx squared plus rx plus s then we obviously have an equation. That's the equal sign tells us that this is an equation. So the left hand side must equal the right hand side. So that means that this here a because it's x cubed, must be equal to the x cubes on the right-hand side. So from this, we can ascertain that a must be equal to p. Likewise, for the x squares on the left-hand side, what we have is we have b, and on the right-hand side here, we have q x squared. So b must be equal to q. Again, if we go up for the x's, we can see that c is equal to r and d is equal to s. And that's essentially what this is telling us. This means that if a is equal to p, b is equal to q, c is equal to r, and d is equal to s, then the left-hand side expression here is equal to the right-hand side expression here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at an example and show how we're going to use this technique in order to solve some problems. So we're going to find the values of the numbers or the letters A, B, A and B here and C if we have the following. So AX plus 2 all squared plus 7 is equal to 3X squared plus B, X plus C. And what we have here is the left-hand side must be equal to the right-hand side. Now, we have a bracket here that we're going to need to multiply out. and We need to rearrange it so we have X squares, X's, and some constants. So the first thing we do is we're going to multiply out that bracket. So let's sort that out. So A by X plus 2 squared is X squared plus 4x plus 4. Then we have the plus 7 is equal to the right-hand side, 3x squared plus bx plus c. Still haven't finished. Just completely multiply out this bracket now. So we get ax squared plus 4ax plus 4a plus 7 is equal to 3x squared plus bx plus c. Now, you can see here, this is my x squares on the left. That has to be equal to the x squares on the right. We also have our x's on the left here, and they must be equal to the x's on the right here. And notice that this here has no x's or x squares, therefore it's just a constant. So this here must be equal to the constant on the right-hand side here. And that means that we can essentially set up a set of equations, a set of simultaneous equations, and we can solve for A, B, and C. So if we have a look at the blue ones first, we can see that on the left-hand side we have A is equal to 3. Well, that's quite handy, so we now know what A is. For the red ones, what we have is 4A is equal to B. And all we're doing is we're just taking the coefficient in front. So the 4a here must be equal to the b on the right-hand side. And the last one is 4a plus 7 is equal to c. Now, a is equal to 3. We know that straight away, which now means that we can substitute it into our second equation. So b implies here that b is equal to 4 by a, and remember a is 3, so 4 by 3, so b is equal to 12. And for the last one there, we can just stick in, again, a is equal to 3, so what we have here is 4 by a, which is 3, plus 7, which is equal to c, and that now means we have 12 plus 7, which is just 19, which is equal to c. So that means A is equal to 3, B is equal to 12, and C 
Siegel tonight too. Hopefully that helps.